In this video tutorial, we're going to talk about masking and a whole lot of gradient maps, as well as some custom gradient maps you'll be able to download so you can learn how to create some of the coolest duo tone images on the web. And it all starts right now. Hey everybody, welcome into this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at five, that's right, you got it, one, two, three, four, five different ways that you can create duotone style images uh, in Photoshop. We're going to cover a number of different things. Let's actually just quickly look over and brief what we're going to create. So first we're going to create, uh, with each of these we're going to learn how to create the duotone in kind of, not really a different way, but a different style. Uh, so we've got this here where we're going to do some masking with letters uh, and some different color duotones and gradient maps. That's kind of cool. We're going to do sort of a comic style duotone effect. We're going to do this very retro sort of sepia tone, duotone image. We're going to do this sort of painted textured poster effect, which is great for like movie posters and different graphics, really cool. And then we're also going to do um, an, an effect inspired by Apple's new, uh, or at, at the time of this recording, their sort of Apple Music Festival 2016 or Music Festival 10, whatever they're calling it. I'm not really sure how they're branding it. Uh, with, I mean, I can't really say my good friend, but a guy who done some work with, uh, Marquez Brownlee, one of the best tech bloggers on YouTube, if you've never checked out his stuff, MKBHD. It's really good stuff. Uh, so let me just get these images all reset, and we'll be ready to start in just a moment. Okay, so with our images set back to kind of regular, if you will, uh, let's go ahead and begin working with the first image here. One of the cool things about duotone images in general is the fact that you can really play with and take some liberties in terms of cutting out your subject and just using like a plain old solid color background. And in fact, sometimes having a very sharp edge on your subject and not a very fine selection can be kind of an artistic element in and of itself and kind of an interesting look. And it's sort of exactly what we're going to do here. I've saved a selection uh, right here called Model. I'm just going to Command or Control click it here. It's not quite where I want it to be. If I zoom out just a touch, you can see it is selecting what would look like him. But I need to grab a, a selection tool and just shift the selection over this way a little bit. You can see it's a very rough selection that roughly follows the outline of uh, his hair, his head, everything like that. I could go in and you know really try to clean up the selection a little bit. We could go into something like uh, select and mask maybe, and say, hey, look, you know, we're gonna use the uh, the edge refine or the refine edge tool, whatever, and we're gonna just maybe try to pick up some of the hair over here. You gotta be really careful though, because I mean, as you can see, the uh, select and mask can be really hit or miss. In fact, I'm not gonna waste any time in there. Uh, we're just going to kind of roll with the selection that I have. And what we need to do is mask this entire uh, layer. So I'm going to just hit the new layer mask icon. Gets rid of everything except this. You can see very wavy edges. Um, you know, if it's not your taste, just go with kind of straighter edges. Uh, maybe use the pen tool, something like that, and get a more exact selection. I'm going to hold down my Commander Control key, add a new layer beneath, and we're just going to fill this. Uh, let's go ahead and fill it with a solid color white. My foreground color is set to white. Option delete. That'd be Alt Backspace on the PC. Uh, all we're going to do is add a gradient map adjustment layer right here. And this is where things get interesting for you. And I'm going to tell you why in a second. If you hit this gradient stripe and open it, check this out. I've got all these different interesting gradients here. And these gradients are available for you to download if you check out the link to the blog post in the description to this tutorial. Um, I do ask for your email address. You sign up for my newsletter, but you get this free gradient file. You can download it. You'll have all these amazing duo tones, and they're just kind of cool gradients anyway. Um, but you'll get them, you know, absolutely free. Uh, you can sign up, unsubscribe for my newsletter. I don't care. Um, I think it's a great newsletter to have, though. It's a once a week type deal. Uh, but go ahead, sign up for that. If you're already signed up for my newsletter, all you have to do is punch your email address in. A new tab pops open. Make sure you have your pop-up pop up blocker either set off or allow it to open up pop-ups on my website, and you will have these gradients uh, at your disposal. So uh, basically what you do is you just go ahead and start choosing. Let me try like this pink pinkish gradient. All right, that's kind of a crazy effect. What about this effect up here? That's kind of cool and you can see because of the way that the gradient map is mapping the color to the image like over here this kind of pale red color is being mapped to the whitest pixels therefore our white background is going to be all red if I select well if I hit OK here and I select my background layer and flip it invert it set it to black uh, just by hitting command or control I you can see the background is now that very very dark blue color which is being mapped to the darkest pixels because after all it's all solid black around him 
So just know you have some control in terms of how the gradient map is mapping itself to your image. We're going to get into more detail on how this works uh, in a little bit. I think I want to roll with maybe something like this one here. I kind of like it. I think it's what I'm going to stick with. I'm going to hit OK. Um, and what we need to do at this point is go ahead and... Uh, We've created our duotone, of course, but we want to create sort of this masked text effect which would lay on top of this duotone. And actually, as I'm looking at it, I think I want to drag in some texture. I'm going to jump out here to my finder, uh, collapse this down, make it just a touch smaller. I have a texture file here. Let me just reorganize this. I got this texture file here, texture.jpg. I'm going to drag this in and drop it in on this image here. Uh, just give it a second. I'm going to zoom out uh, just a kiss. Uh, well, let's try that again. I don't think it. Uh, I don't think it dragged and dropped. There we go. Uh, I'm just going to stretch this out to the sides, just so it covers my entire image, something like that. I think I'm going to flip it vertical, so this kind of darker area of it is at the bottom. Go ahead and commit the change, and try setting the blend mode to something like multiply. Get rid of all of the lighter uh, bits of the texture, but you have a really cool texture. And we can try placing this above or beneath our uh, gradient map. I actually kind of think above looks pretty cool. Uh, that's pretty neat. Uh, and let's go ahead. Now, see, now that I'm looking at this and I see kind of the yellow um, that the texture is infusing, I think I want to change the green in my gradient map, this kind of blue-green, and make it a little bit more of like a desaturated greenish color. Maybe something ooh, not, not quite like that. That's got too much green. Shift this back toward the blue just a little bit. Maybe something like that. We're just tweaking the color a very little bit. Hit OK. That looks kind of neat. Uh, now we're going to, we got We need to create the masks for, we're, I'm just going to use the letters GQ, as you know, like GQ Magazine. Uh, I'll grab my uh, text tool, and I'm going to just type out a G and commit the change. I'm going to open up my character panel over here, which, by the way, is Window Character. And I'm going to use the font, this font Nevis, or Nevis, whatever, however you pronounce it. It's a free font. You can get it from like a website like Font Squirrel, something like that. Let's bump up the size of this uh, font maybe to 150. I'm um, probably even a little bit bigger than that even. Let's try like 225. There we go, something like that. That's cool. Uh, and we'll set the G like right here, all right? Uh, and I don't think we need to mess with anything else. Let's duplicate this layer, Commander Control J, and I'm going to drag this letter down here, and I'm uh, going to replace this with a capital Q. Uh, the Q here I'm going to make even larger. Maybe I'll bump it up to like 400. So I mean, you can see substantially, substantially larger. And I want to drag, well, I don't need to worry about uh, positioning here. I can actually just shut these two layers off because what I need to do is duplicate this uh, the original, original layer. So I'm going to hold down my Alter Option key and just drag this layer up above everything. You can see we've duplicated it. And we want to apply a new gradient map uh, to this part of the photo. So we create like a radically different color. Uh, we're going to begin with the G. So I think I want like an RNG color. Let's go ahead with a gradient map here. And you can see it's gradient mapping the entire image. Don't worry about that. We're going to fix that in a moment. I'm going to go with like this sort of orangey yellow gradient map up here in the corner. I think that looks good. And then just hold down your Alter Option key, hover between both those layers, boom, and you're going to clip it right there to that layer. You know what, actually? I don't know if I want it clipped in high, uh, as I think about it because here's what we're going to do. I'm going to uh, shift click. So I select the gradient map and shift click. And it's going to select both layers. Hit Commander Control G to group them. I'm going to call this uh, G. And what we're going to do is we're going to load G as a selection, and then we're just going to apply a layer mask to this entire layer group. You can see it's now just going to constrain that entire other colored effect just within our nice little masked G. All right, we do basically duplicate that again, drag this layer up, boom, uh, create a, uh, a gradient map. And for this, I think I want to maybe try like a, a, a bluish. Something like that might be good. I don't know, maybe like a blue-green would be cool, too. I'm just trying to think of what would look good next to that uh, that orange. I think I'm going to go with... I think I'm going to go with something like this. Let's just roll with this and see what it looks like. All right. Again, select both layers. Group it. Commander Control G. We're going to call this Q. I'm going to load the Q as a selection with that layer group selected. Now I'm going to just hit the add new layer mask icon. And you can see here uh, the G is kind of getting swallowed up because the Q is massive, but also because the Q is on top. So I'm going to drag the Q down here beneath. That way the G kind of sits on top. Look at this nice GQ text revealed multiple duo toned image uh, in Photoshop. A really, really cool effect. There's a lot of techniques in here that uh, you'll find really useful. Um, and it's just, I don't know, I think it's just kind of a cool looking image. Move things around, have fun with it, and uh, yeah, let's move on to the next one. 
So now as we move along to the second duo toning effect, I want to let you guys know I'm selling a course over on tutvid.com. It's all about how to retouch images in Photoshop. If you pick up a copy, it helps support Tutvid, helps me create more of these tutorials, and I'm always trying to create more of these tutorials. Um, and by the way, if you have suggestions for a tutorial, something you would like to see, please feel free to leave a comment beneath. Um, and while you're at it, smash the thumbs up button because that always helps. Um, but yeah, if you pick up a course, and a link will appear somewhere up here in the corner of the video, somewhere over there, uh, click on that, check it out. If you pick up a copy, of the course. Um, hey, I'm just super appreciative and uh, you help out .com, So hey, but let's just get back to this tutorial and focus on the final four duo tone effects that we're going to cover in this video tutorial. We're going to talk about a comic book style duo tone effect. And I call it this because I don't really know what else to call it. And I thought it still looked kind of cool and wanted to show you how to do it. What we want to do is use a threshold adjustment layer here and just reduce the threshold of this particular image uh, maybe to about... I don't know about there to where the, where you know the 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 lens on the goggles looks pretty solid everything you know is broken up but you can still see sort of the details all right so you can see we went from an image that looked like that to like that. We now want to merge these two layers to a new layer. Command shift option or control shift alt on the PC and the letter E merges them up to a new layer. Great. Now on this new layer, we want to do a couple things. I'm going to right click and convert it to a smart object so we're working with a smart object and I'm going to call this uh, distortion uh, if I can spell Let's spell that correctly. Distortion, there we go. And what I think I want to do first is go filter, distort, uh, and either go with uh, probably wave, not zigzag. I'll go with wave. And I'm just looking here at the tiny little preview they give me. Um, but what I want to do is maybe increase the number of generators to like five. Uh, the wavelength, I'll increase it. I think I'm gonna re uh, I'm gonna increase the max. I want it to be fairly subtle. I do want it to still be wavy, but I don't want it to look like it's, you know, totally being destroyed. And I'm really going to reduce the amplitude. So again, I just want this to be a subtle effect, something that's kind of going to kind of take straight lines and stuff that looks pretty straight and just make it a little bit, you know, distorted. That's all I'm looking to do here. All right, so maybe set the max amplitude to something like 10 uh, and reduce the max wavelength. A little bit. Bring it down around 430. I guess that's good. Hit OK. And you're going to see we just have kind of this little like twisted effect that happens. I also want to add some texture to this. So let's go filter, uh, filter gallery actually. Bring up the filter gallery. And down here under texture, hey, it's like the one thing I do in filter gallery. So it has it brought up the texturizer. Um, I'm going to set the scaling. Uh, I want the scaling actually to be pretty small. And the relief, I'm going to, well, you know, I actually don't want to increase it too, too much. Uh, I do want it to be somewhat subtle. But I do want the highlight to be kind of, you know, snappy and crisp. Uh, but I think that looks pretty good. Uh, something like that. That looks good. I'm just looking to add a little bit of texture to it, almost like it's on a page. And at this point, all we need to do is now go and, like we've been doing, use the gradient map and uh, select any one of these colors. Let's go with, like, uh, the pink here. Now, the problem with this is, is I think this effect looks better when the shadows have the lighter color and the highlights have the darker color. I'm going to hit OK. And the reason I want to do this is because all the, the bright spots out here, I'm, I want the highlights to have the darker color, excuse me, and the shadows to have the brighter color. Um, so the way we can do that is just turn that gradient map adjustment layer back on and just hit the reverse option. So you can see we get this very almost like, I don't know, chalky drawn onto a dark page type effect. That's actually kind of cool. Uh, we just did that. I think I kind of like this, but I want to adjust the gradient a little bit. Maybe I'll give the blue a little bit more saturation. Maybe make it a little darker, something like that. And the pink, or the the red, I want to make it more of like a a hot pink, but kind of a darker hot pink, something like that. Like that's kind of cool. All right, I can hit OK, and there we go. We have a duo tone, but like you know, obviously very different than our original image. We've kind of created this sort of, you know, rough comic booky type effect. Um, obviously, a lot of it is going to be in your zig or your wave, excuse me, not zigzag, but your wave filter. Um, you know, how fine do you want all of the jagginess to be? Mine are just like big wavy waves. Uh, but there's a lot you can do with that filter when you play around with it and really check it out. Let's move on to the retro sort of sepia duo tone effect. And this is maybe the most boring out of all the effects, but it's still pretty cool. And we're gonna cover some neat techniques to do this. I think you're gonna really enjoy it. First thing I'm gonna do, right click, convert this to a smart object. And then I'm gonna go filter, blur gallery, and choose tilt shift blur. Reason I'm doing this is because I want this, uh, well, I wanna give this a tilt shift effect. So I'm going to, first things first, rotate my tilt shift. So it kind of uh, flows with this little abbey or whatever this is here. I'm gonna move my focal point back to about here. Uh, maybe I'll rotate it 
rotate it just a touch more. More kind of like that. It looks good. And then I'll take um, the area of sharpness, expand it out a little bit so these kind of like steeple towers uh, are, are, you know, not completely falling out of focus. And here on this side, these these dotted lines, you can drag them back and forth to show kind of how much you or how, how quickly you want the blur to go from completely blurry to completely sharp. Uh, over here, I want the blur to fall off rather quickly. And the front side of this tilt shift, uh, the blur can transition a little bit more smoothly. And then what we can do is just crank up the amount of blur if we want. Maybe I'll put it up to like 25. 25 might be a little bit much. Maybe I'll just do like 18, something like that. I don't spend a huge amount of time messing around with this. Hit OK. It's going to give us a nice little um, tilt shift blur. And obviously, because we converted it to a smart object, we can shut it off or turn it on anytime we like. After we've added the tilt shift effect, we want to go ahead, and you can see it's kind of annoying me that the top of that steeple is so blurred. I'm going to pretend it's not in existence for the sake of helping speed things along. Add a curves adjustment layer first and foremost, and pull up on the black point, and pull down on the white point. We're just looking to really reduce contrast here. In fact, I'm going to further accentuate by just boosting the brightness of the darker tones here, and reducing the brightness of the lighter tones here. We've really just <laughs> obliterated the contrast in our image. Kind of like it, though. Uh, next up, we're going to apply our gradient map, which is going to be our duo toning. I think I'm going to go with like this brown yellow fade. I kind of, I kind of dig that. Uh, maybe it's a little bit too saturated, so we can like throw a vibrance adjustment layer, uh, reduce the saturation here, maybe knock it down to like 30, negative 30 ish. It looks kind of cool. A little too bright, so let's throw a channel mixer adjustment layer. We really don't need to mess with anything here. We're just going to set the uh, blend mode to multiply. All right, yeah, look at that. I'm really digging that. See, there's why it's a good idea to get rid of some of that saturation. We get rid of that kind of like crazy, hazy yellow. In fact, we could even pump a little bit more kill off saturation ness into the image. Look at how old fashioned this is starting to look. Last but not least, we need to add some grain. We're going to blow through how to add this grain really, really fast. Create one new layer. We're going to name it small uh, grain. I'm going to go edit, fill. I'm going to fill this with, not the foreground color, but 50% gray, hit OK. My foreground and background colors, I want them to be black and white. I'm going to go filter, noise, add noise. I'm going to add, yeah, let's just say 35% noise, uh, uniform great. Make sure monochromatic is ticked on, very important. Hit OK. We're going to set this to the blend mode of soft light, and I'm going to duplicate this, Commander Control J. Now I'm going to hit Commander Control T. I'm going to uh, zoom out here. I'm just going to command minus out and I'm going to hold down shift and option. This will be shift and alt on the PC and I'm going to make this noise quite a bit larger until width and height are, you know, about 250% or so. 246% great. Hit the little check icon. Now what we want to do is load this as a selection. So select and all. It's going to load the document as a selection. Hit command or control J to pop that up onto a new layer. Why did I just do that, you ask? Well, because now our grain is just the bit of grain that's covering the image. This whole small grain layer here that we made huge, there's all of this stuff out here which is just taking up a pretty big amount of file size and it's all extra junk that we don't need. So I can just delete that layer, zoom back in, and we can just go ahead and tweak our grain uh, to our liking. So I can reduce the opacity of the small grain to like 35%, reduce the opacity of the big grain to, you know, 40 or so percent. And we have this really cool, very old-fashioned uh, sort of aerial photography effect that we got because we duotone. You can see if I get rid of that gradient map layer, all of a sudden it's starting to just look like kind of this low-contrast, semi-modern-looking uh, photo. Add that duotone effect, and it totally changes the way the image looks. All right, on to the next image. This is sort of this cool textured poster effect. So with the texture poster effect, we want to add a layer beneath our model. Now the model, I've already cut him out. He's on his own layer. Uh, it's really nice and helpful to have that. Again, it doesn't need to be a perfect selection. Part of the beauty of some of this duotone stuff is sometimes not having a perfectly selected object can actually kind of play to your favor and look kind of cool. Um, I'm going to create a new layer above the background because I still don't quite know what I'm going to do with the background. Maybe actually, I'm going to select the background and go like edit, adjustments, hue saturation, and just make it like slightly yellow. So I'm going to tick on colorize. I'm going to darken it just a little bit, or maybe I'll darken it a lot actually. And I'm going to shift this to like a brownish yellow, and then I'm going to crank up the saturation. Maybe all the way up, why not, right? And then just begin bringing the brightness up until it's just a very, very subtle sort of butter, extremely light butter yellow background. All right, so on layer two, I'm going to name this layer clouds, and I'm going to set my foreground color. Uh, well, I want a white to be in there, but the darker foreground color, I'm going to set to like the blue in the darkest parts of his jacket. So a very, very deep, like navy blue. And then we're going to go filter, render, 
and choose to render clouds. It's going to fill that layer with these clouds. They're a little bit, there's too much brightness there for us. So I'm going to go filter render and I'm going to choose difference clouds on top of that. You can see it's giving us a lot more like darkness, uh, kind of cool. In fact, what I'll do with this is I'll still go image adjustments uh, levels. There we go. And I'm going to just pump up the darkness of the overall background a bit. Give the whites a little bit of bite back there, but just generally pump up the overall darkness of the background. There we go. And if you feel like it's still not enough blue, did we actually, yeah, we got dark blue, but I don't, I don't know. There's enough blue commander control you to bring up hue saturation. We can tick on colorize, make this nice and dark, uh, pump some saturation into there, make it more like blue like that. All right. That's kind of cool. We'll just leave it there. We don't need to do too, you know, a huge amount with that effect. I'm just going to rename his layer model. And actually, really, the coloring in the background doesn't matter because we are going to go ahead and add a gradient map and <laughs> begin to totally change the color here. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to choose this kind of dark, flat blue to a red color. Um, now, I like this because it's really killing off a lot of detail in his suit jacket. I don't like it because I feel like it's flattening out his skin too much. So what do I do? I'm going to hit OK. I want to add a, uh, a selective color adjustment layer underneath the gradient map layer. So select the model layer and choose the selective color option. I'm going to go to my whites. So I'm going to work on the whites and I'm going to reduce black in the whites area. That's going to essentially make my highlights pop a little bit more. So you can see there's before, there's after. We're just making those highlights brighter, which means that more of the bright side of our gradient map, which is the red, is going to kind of attack the highlights of the image because we're, well, making them brighter. And what we have left to do now is group all of these layers, so the from the clouds up to our gradient map into one group, and I'll call this, you know, guy or something, and we're going to hide it. So I'm going to uh, create a new layer mask, but I'm going to hold down my Alter Option key and just hide that. What we can do at this point is grab our brush tool, so the letter B, right click. I've got these kind of inky swirl brushes. There's a ton of great free brushes over on a website called BrushEasy.com. Um, in fact, if I can find these brushes, I will link them. Um, I certainly will link that grunge cloud texture that we used earlier. We're actually going to use it again in this image. Uh, that'll be in a link down in the description so you can grab that. Uh, but let's go ahead and just use this. Uh, I'm going to begin with like this first brush here. I'm painting with the, my foreground color set to white, and I'm just going to click once. Oh, I'm going to I'm going to single click once right in the middle of my uh, document. All right, great. Maybe I'll take this one here. I'll single click right there. I'll grab this brush here. I'll single click there. You know, with this brush here, I'll click once there. Maybe I'll double click right there. Cool. Starting to really build this effect a little bit. Bring that in. I'm just really going over this. I, I want to make sure that I can see his face entirely. And then it's just going to be a matter of adjusting how much of the rest of uh, kind of this this poster that we see. I'm going to bring up my little brush options here, and I'm going to rotate the angle of my brush a smidge. I'm going to rotate it a little bit more than that, maybe something like that, and bring that out of there. Cool. And let me right-click out here once more. Let me see. This kind of looks interesting. We can just bring this down kind of where his tie would be. I kind of dig that. All right, I'm going to close my brushes panel here. And I think something that would actually look kind of interesting would be if we go into here and move, like, grab the clouds layer and just drag it down, 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 something like that. So there's some red appearing up at the top. And then on this clouds layer, well, maybe that's a little bit too destructive. Let's select, uh, put a layer above the clouds layer and call this white bar. We could also do something like with the uh, rectangular marquee tool. Just drag a bar across like this and fill it with white. So my foreground color is set to white. Halt, uh, hit Option Delete, Alt Backspace on the PC. Uh, that's not doing much of anything. Why? Why? Oh, because it's beneath the model, maybe. There we go. So you can see now we just kind of have this red line across. Yeah, the red line across him, and it's because you know it's it's solid white. So. Maybe if I drag it down there, it's a little bit more subtle, something like that. Looks kind of cool on the bottom of the top. Now, one thing that I think would be good is if we use that texture that we used before uh, again. So let's go over to the Finder. Let's drag that texture into here. Uh, and again, I'll have this texture linked down in the description of this video. Let's just stretch it out. I'm not really concerned about constraining any kind of proper proportions or anything like that. Let's commit that change. And let's try setting this to, like, multiply. I think multiply, I, oh, I kind of dig that. I actually kind of dig that. It looks kind of neat. Um, now, one thing that I do want to do is I actually don't mind the texture being over him, but let's see what it looks like if we get rid of the texture that's above him. So just Commander Control click on this layer mask, and then we still have the texture layer selected, 
and we'll alt or option click the new uh, layer mask icon. You can see that's going to uh, just kind of cover that area in black. And we can see there's before and after. I don't know. I don't know what I like more. I think I kind of like it with the texture there. Let's just delete that layer mask. I'm going to get rid of that. But, I mean, essentially you can see here uh, we've we've created this kind of cool movie poster. You can throw your text down at the bottom. Uh, we can try even duplicating the texture. Command or Control J looks kind of neat. You know, reduce the opacity. Or we could just try going, like, with overlay. Uh, I don't know that I dig overlay. I think it's a little uh, little harsh. Let's go back to multiply. Reduce the opacity a bit. Maybe at this point load that as a selection and just you know, hide one of the textures. So we're just adding texture to the outside. Yeah, and that's kind of cool. So we create this effect, um, you know, rather quickly in Photoshop. And maybe if we need to kind of brighten this up, give it more contrast, again, load that as a selection, that, that little area as a selection. Maybe we'll even select the layer group, add a curves adjustment layer, and just go ahead and boost the contrast of it a little bit um, and just see what you can get out of it. See if you can make it look uh, a little bit nicer. Pull back on this a little, the white point a little bit. You can see there's before, there's after. So you just play around with it to your taste. Uh, do what you think looks best. Alrighty, so last but not least, let's come over here to our last uh, document. I've just created a new document, 2560 by 1440. Um, and I the first thing I need to do is work on the background. We need a, the, the, the Apple is doing all these very brightly colored backgrounds. I think starting back with like iOS 7, you started getting these very dramatic, um, very brightly colored, very saturated color, you know, gradients. And that seems to have made an appearance again here with the uh, the Apple Music event. So let's do that here with the background. I'm just going to use a straight gradient tool. So I'm going to grab the gradient tool. And I do have the gradient specifically for this tutorial included in this pack. It's the last three gradients. The background gradient is this green uh, to somewhat more tealy green. And I'm just going to click at the top, hold down my shift key, drag to the bottom. Voila, we have our background. That was easy, right? Uh, we're going to grab the text tool now, and I'm going to type out a number 10. Uh, we need a rather large number 10. Uh, the, the font that Apple is using has a very circular zero, so you can play with. You can even create your own one and zero using the shape tools, which actually would probably be the better way to go. It's just a little bit more time consuming, so we're not going to do it right here, right now. I'm going to open up the character panel here again. I'm going to get rid of the letter spacing, so I'm going to set that back to zero. So you got a nice number 10 here. Maybe I'll try to flatten this down a little bit. Maybe set it's like 90, maybe 80, 70. No, 70 is looking a little too squashed. Let's go like 85. We could probably get away with that. That's not too bad. And I need to make this quite a bit larger. So I'm going to zoom out, Command or Control T to free transform, and we're going to make this pretty massive. So something like, something like that where it's just a very subtle in the background. It's sort of a 10 if you look at it and you know what you're looking for. And we're going to set the layer opacity to 7%. Again, we're making it extraordinarily subtle. At this point, we want to grab our uh, model or our subject for this image. So I got Marcus Brownlee here, photographed him a few years ago up outside of New York City, uh, up near where he was going to college. And I've just cut him out of the background. In fact, there's some messed up areas here along the edge. I'm going to grab the brush tool. And I will uh, just load in basic brushes, hit OK. And I'm going to paint with solid white. Whoop, make sure I select the layer mask. Paint with solid white right up here along this edge. Paint with solid black and just get rid of that little uh, you know, nubby stuff that's sticking out. I'm not going to be too terribly picky here, uh, but I will go over and just clean up the stuff that will be pretty obviously distracting to our final finished result. Also, the side of his face here needs a little bit of help. It's... Um, it has been kind of painted away, courtesy of our selection. So I'm going to just go over this really, really quickly. All right, super cool. So we've got him ready to go. What we're going to do is select the uh, layer, and we're going to drag him right into our document. And it's going to say, look, a diff different uh, depth. Don't worry about it. It's just a 16-bit image coming into an 8-bit uh, document. And we're going to right-click on this and choose to convert it to a smart object. It actually was a smart object, but I'm just I'm going through the... The, uh, the motions with you here. I'm going to close this .psb. We don't need that. And I'm going to Command or Control T, and we're going to downsize him just a little bit. So I'm holding down my Shift and Option keys. That's allowing it's allowing me to constrain proportion and uh, also scale down toward the center. Scale up a little bit here, and voila. You can zoom in just a little bit. All right, so now we're ready to add our a duotone effect to him. Now, with these Apple Music posters, it's more like a tritone, um, sometimes even more than three colors going on. We're actually going to do three colors here with Marquez. Um, 
We're going to target one color to kind of the midtones, one to the highlights, and one to the shadows. And in fact, if I go ahead and create a gradient map uh, adjustment layer here, I do have a couple gradients here that have multiple, you know, three, four colors. That's not really the way we're going to approach this because we want to be even more specific than this. Now, of course, you can come in here and adjust just how much of the image, like the red here, is going to target. Well, we don't want to get rid of the red, but you really just have the option to say, hey, look, I need more of that light blue in there, or I really need more of the super light blue in there, or maybe I want to pump up the shadowy parts of the image just a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to hit cancel to just get out of that. Let's open this back up. We are just going to use, we're going to use two separate uh, gradient maps. I'm going to go with this one right here. In fact, I'd name it MKBH, uh, MKBHD01. I'm going to hit uh, OK. And what I want is I want the orangey part of this. In fact, let's just clip it to the layer beneath. Command, Option, or Control, Alt, and letter G. There's just too much blue. There's too much of the dark blue. I need the peachy color to be much more prevalent here on this highlight side of his face. And just by its very nature, it's going to be targeting the highlight over here on uh, the left side of his head. Well, left for us. Left side of his head as well. So I'm going to go back into my gradient editor. I'm going to select the gradient handle. I'm going to just nudge it over this way a little bit, a little bit more. And then I can use this gradient midpoint as well and just really control where the blue uh, comes up to and where the peach runs into as well. And you can just use uh, use each of these sliders with care, and we can really make sure we get a, a good, good kind of wash of that peachy color on the right-hand side of his face. All right, now that we've done that, we're going to create another gradient map adjustment. Again, Command-Option-G, Control-Alt-G to clip it to the layers beneath, and we're going to go for the second MKBHD uh, gradient here. And at this point, we're looking to bring the lighter pink color over here to the left side of his face. So right off the bat, I'm going to drag it over, 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 over some more. Maybe something like that. Ignore. We're, just, I mean, we're blowing the living daylights out of the side of his face. It's just, you know, the highlights are gone. Detail is gone. I'm not worried about that right now. I'm worried about this side of his face. So I'm going to drag it back, maybe increase... Uh, how much the darks are allowed to influence it a little bit. Eh, maybe not too much. All right, and hit OK. Now, obviously, this, this gradient map is doing a lot of damage, so we need to select the layer mask and just fill it with black by hitting Command or Control i It's going to fill it with black. And all we need to do at this point is we can, you know, load him as a selection. We really don't need to load him as a selection. Uh, grab our brush tool. We're going to right-click, make our brush a little bit larger. We want a very soft brush. Make my brush tool a little bit larger. Uh, set the opacity of the brush down to around like 40% or so. We're painting with the color white. And then begin painting over this side of his face. So just a few clicks. And we really kind of want there to be a noticeable difference between where this bright magenta hits his, this side of his nose and the orangey color, the peachy color, is hitting the other side of his nose. In fact, we can even go into this gradient map at this point and say, you know what, we need to pump that peachy color up even more. Maybe we want to make the peachy, orangey color even more rich. It's got to be light, though. It's got to be light. Something like so. We can increase how the blues leak into it, but still make sure we keep the intensity of that peachy orange color up. Hit OK. And then we can just, you know, feather this purple, the purpley magenta color in wherever it needs to go. And if there's too much of it, flip your foreground color to black. Then come in here and just paint a little bit away on that side of his nose, that side of his forehead, uh, just, you know, just as it needs to be done. So just like that, we've created kind of this very complex duo tone where it's more like three tones. where We've got the bluish color, the purplish magenta color, and the orange color, depending on where we want them to be in our image. And then, of course, you throw some text over it and the date and location of Apple's Music Fest, and you've created this kind of cool Apple Music style, more of a tritone effect um, than duotone effect, uh, but very cool all the same. So guys, that's going to have to be it for this one. I hope you've enjoyed it. For creating duotone images in Photoshop and a whole lot of gradient map goodness, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodds, I'll catch you in the next one.